Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about a very special phase in a red giant's life. As the core continues to collapse, eventually the electron degeneracy will halt the core collapse. So the core cannot go any, become any smaller because of gravitational forces will be halted by the repulsive force of electrons pushing back. In the meanwhile, around the core we have the helium burning shell and we have the hydrogen burning shell. And the helium burning shell is very sensitive to very small fluctuations in the temperature. Helium fusion process, the helium fusion process with very small fluctuations in the temperature will go through very sudden changes in fusion process in the rate at which the fusion process takes place. So because of that, it causes fluctuation in the radiation pressure as the helium fusion uh, increases, the radiation pressure increases, and as the temperature drops, the radiation drops, the, the fusion process drops, and so the star begins to fluctuate in the amount of heat generated and the amount of radiation pressure generated by that heat and by that fusion process, which is constantly increasing and decreasing and increasing and decreasing. That has such an enormous effect on the star that the radius of the star will increase in size and decrease in size and increase in size and decrease in size over time in a very regular pattern. It turns out that that can happen from anywhere from about a one-day period to several month period. Many of them are anywhere between a one and a hundred day period in the fluctuation of the intensity of the radiation coming from the inside of the star causing the size of the star to fluctuate and it becomes a, what we call a variable star. What is amazing about these variable stars is that the period of fluctuation, the time it takes for one peak to the next peak to the next peak, that that is very regular in periodicity. And on top of that, that the periodicity will vary depending upon the size of the star. So larger stars will have a much longer periodicity and smaller stars will have a much shorter periodicity. And this incredible relationship has been very valuable for astronomers to figure out sizes of stars and so forth. And again, that will be for a different, uh, different uh, video when we talk about variable stars in general. But anyway, stars like this, the big red giant stars, at the end stage of their red giant stage will become very unstable. They will continue to fluctuate and fluctuate. And during that time, these, these bursts of radiation pressure causes the outer regions of the star to slowly drift and fade away. Every time there's another pulse, more and more the, the star's surface will slowly move away from the star. And so the star will be emptied of its outer layers. The core will continue to heat up because of the he helium burning uh, shell around the core, receiving all that energy from the helium burning. The core will continue to increase in temperature, reaching 200 million Kelvin, reaching 300 million Kelvin, very high temperatures, but not reaching the critical temperature necessary to start the next fusion process. That is only reserved to the very, very large stars that have so much mass and so much pressure and so much helium burning around around the core that the temperature can reach a temperature of 600 million Kelvin. At that point, carbon will continue to fuse into the next element. But for the vast majority of the stars, that will not happen. The core temperature of the star will remain below 600 million Kelvin, and therefore, that is pretty well the end stage of the core of the, of the vast majority of stars that they will fill up with carbon. They'll become like a ball of carbon ash remaining from the burning of helium into carbon, and we use the word burning, but of course, essentially, we're talking about the fusion process, and so you end up with a big ball of carbon at the center, reaching temperatures of hundreds of million degrees Kelvin, but not hot enough to start the next fusion process, and the outer layers, because of the fluctuation, just continuing to shed layer by layer, pieces of mass of star will slowly being, eject being ejected away from the star as the fluctuations just continue and this process will continue over a period of millions of years but not a very long period of time and eventually the vast majority of the material will have moved away from the core and you'll have the core by itself and the outer layer slowly moving away from the star. And so that's what we call the variable or the instability stage of the star where you have these regular intervals of fluctuations in brightness and, dimming, brightness and dimming of the star. Notice that the 
the change in the radius of the star can be as much as 5 to 10 percent of the size of the star. And those huge fluctuations do make a very big difference in the luminosity of the star, sometimes increasing by a factor of two or three from the dimmest to the brightest to dimmest to the brightest period of the star. Also notice that over time the fluctuations become more violent as the changes in the temperature of the helium burning process vary more and more, causes greater fluctuations of temperature, causing, causing greater fluctuations in the radiation differentiation, and causes these greater changes in the radius of the star and therefore the luminosity of the star. And eventually they become so violent that the star will simply begin to disintegrate and layers will begin to move away from the center core of the star.